Well, I wasn't going to compare these two cameras. Um, quite honestly, I'm not super interested in the Canon R5. I kind of bought it on a whim and it came a lot earlier than I thought it would. They're somewhat comparable. There are obviously a lot of differences between the two. Let's run down that list a little bit here. The Zcam E2 F6 obviously is a cinema camera first. It can take stills, but it's not made for stills. It has a completely different body shape. This is a cube. It's made for mounting. It's made for rigging with other accessories on it. It has some different powering options. It has a two pin Limo input and a built-in MPF mount on the back. It has an interchangeable lens mount on the front. It has uh, more professional connections on the back. The built-in screen on top is tiny, so it's really only made for the menu. And you have more codec and uh, picture profile options with the Z-Cam. Uh, you have ProRes, you have H.265, H.264, and you have Z-RAW. And you can record ProRes RAW externally to an Atomos device like this Ninja V. And you essentially have direct contact with the manufacturer through their Facebook group. I've seen many times people request features and they are implemented in the next firmware update. It's pretty amazing. Now the Canon R5, on the other hand, is obviously a stills camera first. It's a hybrid, so it does video as well. The body is definitely made for being handheld. It has a nice built-in EVF and a usable screen that flips out. Uh, the camera has built-in IBIS in-body image stabilization. It has pretty fantastic autofocus if you're using compatible lenses. It has less professional connectors, um, notably the micro HDMI output. It has less codec options with just H.264, H.265, and the Canon RAW, which is 8K and very heavy. And you essentially don't have any contact with the manufacturer other than their support, which, um, I don't know, it's probably not fantastic. Both of these cameras have full frame sensors with a three by two aspect ratio. The Canon sensor is exactly 36 by 24 millimeters and the Z cam is only slightly larger. In 8K RAW, the Canon will only use a 17 by nine portion of the sensor for video. The Z cam can record the full open gate image, but when recording in ProRes RAW with the Ninja V, it only uses a 5.7K portion of the sensor. This is actually not the full width of the sensor, so we get a wider field of view from the Canon. The perspectives in this shot can't be perfectly aligned because the cameras are sitting side by side and at slightly different heights, but when I overlay the Canon, you can see how much wider it is. This isn't exactly the fault of the Z-Cam. It's likely that this is just what Atomos decided to support in the Ninja V. When recording internally, both the Canon and the Z-Cam should have the same wide field of view. Looking at the output dimensions, you can see the Canon's 8K image is substantially larger than the Z-Cam's ProRes RAW image. Now you might think that bigger is better here, but there are a couple things to consider. The Canon might deliver a more detailed image since it has more pixels. In a 4K timeline, you can't necessarily see that difference, but when you zoom in pixel to pixel, you can indeed see more detail in the Canon image. But I realized as I was editing this that there is a sharpness control in the RAW tab here. By default, it's set to 10, and we can see that if I drop this down to zero, this loses sharpness considerably. So it wasn't necessarily natural sharpness in that AK sensor or in that RAW file. It was being applied in post, although it is, it is a pretty good sharpening here. The lower pixel density in the Z-Cam means it has larger pixels, and this can lead to better noise performance. In actuality, side by side, they have about the same amount of noise. I've zoomed in so you can see all of that beautiful noise. The Z-Cam tops out at 8000 ISO when recording in ProRes RAW, but in post you can bring that up to 25600 if you want. Now you wouldn't really want to use RAW necessarily for really dark shots like this. I think you'll get better results in both cameras using H.265 codecs. They can both apply noise reduction. The Canon would probably definitely apply noise reduction. Z-Cam gives you the option of turning that off. You'll get some good results doing that, or you can spend time in post and try to reduce that noise. Final Cut did a terrible job. It looks like plasticky skin. I think Resolve gives you a lot better control over that and a lot better results with noise reduction, but it doesn't natively edit ProRes RAW. So you'd have to convert it and then deal with it. And it's kind of a hassle. I don't like that workflow very much. And here's the H.265 in both cameras. I'm seeing some interesting results. Uh, first of all, the cameras are set to different ISO levels to get a relative exposure using a gray card. The Canon is around ISO 16,000. The Z cam is around ISO 8,000. And that could account for some of the differences we're seeing here. Um, I'm seeing a lot less noise in the Z cam. In fact, it's really killing the Canon here. It's cleaner, it has better colors. The Canon is kind of blotchy and a lot noisier. His background is crawling a lot more. The Z cam in this image, the noise reduction is set to off in the camera. So strangely, even though there's no noise reduction here, nor in the RAW, 
the H265 looks cleaner. I know that H265 as a codec has noise reduction options built in, and I think maybe they are still active even with the setting turned to off in the Z cam. That's my suspicion here, but I can't confirm that. I'm not sure what kind of noise reduction, if any, the Canon is doing, but in any case, it just doesn't look as good at the same relative exposure as the Z cam. One strange thing I'm seeing with the Z cam that I've never seen before is it has kind of this weird strobing pattern going on across the screen. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to check in with Z cam on that. And now the Z cam is set to medium noise reduction. It only has medium, weak, and off. And I can see that it has reduced the noise quite a bit, but uh, it hasn't really sacrificed the image too much. I still have that weird strobing, which I think is just a fluke, maybe something to do with the powering of the monitor or something, I don't know. But uh, it actually looks pretty good. The colors on the Canon, on the other hand, don't look very good. Again, this could be because the ISO is a lot higher, but that's what it takes to get relative exposures between these two cameras. It just looks much worse. Uh, if you look at the grass the, behind there, it's it's crawling a lot more. There's a lot more noise. It's kind of blotchy. Um, I'm, I'm getting a lot better image from the Z cam here. I was kind of surprised because the RAW, they looked very close, very comparable, but here uh, the H265 and the Z cam is killing it. With Canon RAW and DaVinci Resolve, I can use the RAW controls here to adjust the the lift, the gain, the tint, the exposure, those kind of things. I can't change the ISO for whatever reason, and also it thinks it's Canalog 2 when it's not Canalog 2. The Zcam footage is not raw. I uh, converted this in Final Cut Pro into ProRes 4444 and exported it with a uh, HDR color space. Um, I can easily just use the lift gamma gain controls to uh, bring this, oops, to adjust this where I need it, kind of like that, and you can see that we're already pretty close with our exposures here. Both of these images are in a good place now to grade. There's no official Canon log LUT for this camera. I'm not even sure if there's an official Canon log LUT period. The version of Canon log in this camera is particular to this camera. And even if it had Canon log two or three, it wouldn't necessarily be the same as Canon log two or three in say a C300 or a C500. So you're kind of on your own. There's third party LUTs out there you can buy or you can just grade yourself, which is what I'm gonna do here. I'm not trying to match these two images. I'm just gonna get them close enough just to see how good they can look, uh, or at least as good as I can make them look uh, without spending a lot of time doing it. So this is my quick and dirty grade. I hope what you can see from these two cameras is that by shooting in RAW, you're getting all of the information that that sensor can deliver, and it's up to you to get the image you want out of it. I will say that I, I seem to be constantly fighting kind of a yellow color on the Z cam, especially in skin tones. Um, it could just be the way that I grade, but I don't get it with other cameras that I shoot with. Color grading is so subjective, and when I'm shooting on the Z cam, I don't necessarily notice that yellow push. There is the Z cam color plugin, but I, I generally don't use it. A lot of times I'm grading in HDR, and it doesn't work well for HDR. I find the color is a little odd with that plugin. The Canon, on the other hand, has a bit of a magenta push. It might be easier to fix than the Z cam. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the Canon. The colors look natural and very pleasing. You're getting those Canon colors. Now, supposedly the Canon has less dynamic range because it's only using C-Log and not C-Log 2, but I haven't done any kind of testing here to really show that it has less of a dynamic range compared to the Z cam or not. I'm pretty happy with the image I'm getting out of both these cameras as far as dynamic range goes. I think it helps to give a little background on my experience with these cameras. I've been shooting with the Zcam E2 F6 for over a year. I had a pre-production unit in September of 2019. Uh, I bought my production unit in December and uh, I've been using it ever since. The Canon I've only had for just maybe two or three weeks. So, you know, not fair as far as how much experience I have with these cameras. Although the Canon is pretty easy to get into. Um, as I mentioned, there's not a lot of options as far as codecs. I'm prefer to shoot in a log profile, so I'm just limited to C-Log. But because it is so small and uh, lightweight and hand holdable, it's very easy to take out and shoot. If I was a blogger, you know, doing lifestyle blogs or whatever, uh, it would be a great choice because I could just run around with that thing and shoot and just, you know, it's very easy to, to carry as opposed to something like the Z-Cam where I have it rigged up more for um, easy rig or shoulder rig work. It kind of grows and gets bigger and heavier and at that point, it's, I mean, it's never really been a blogging style camera, but the way I have it rigged up right now, it's definitely more in the cinema style. You can run and gun with it, but it's just not the same thing as um, a point and shoot kind of camera like the Canon. I'm also pretty familiar with grading the Z-Log2 
profile uh, that I mostly shoot with on the Z cam. Less so with the ProRes RAW, although there's so much information there that it's pretty easy to push and pull that wherever you want to go. I'm also not very familiar with the Canon log on the Canon, but so far it's been pretty easy to grade. I like the color. I mean, you get the great Canon color out of their cameras, so uh, that's a, a nice kind of bonus. Canon's always been known for their good color. As far as things I like and don't like, I like that I can grab the Canon and run around with it. That's really convenient. It's smaller, lighter weight package. The IBIS is really great. All of these shots here were handheld. I don't like that the Codex pretty hard to work with in post. It shoots in 422 color, 10 bit, but that particular H.265 codec currently can't be played back by any computer hardware. It's not natively supported, so um, it essentially, essentially doesn't play back smoothly ever. Uh, the Canon RAW actually plays back pretty smooth on my system. I just have a 2017 iMac, so I would shoot in the Canon RAW all the time, but since it's completely uncompressed, the file sizes are massive. I only have a 128 gigabyte CF Express card, and it gives me five minutes and 59 seconds of 8K RAW recording, and that's it. I haven't run into the overheat um, problem with the Canon. This is on the newer firmware that, you know, helped that out a little bit, but I just, I just don't shoot long takes usually. If I was using it for this kind of shooting, then I would probably run into that overheating quite often and it would be very frustrating. But since I don't, it hasn't been a problem for me. The Z cam, the way I rig it out, um, it's just too heavy to go around, you know, one handing it. I can't blog with it. There's no autofocus. It needs a monitor. You can't use the built-in screen. It's too small. Um, I often use an EVF just because it's easier to see than an on-screen monitor like this. I love that the Z cam has an interchangeable mount. I love that it has a locking mount. It's pretty fantastic. Although no complaints with the Canon here, both the RF mount and this adapter, which is the Canon adapter to EF are both very solid. There's very little play between any of these elements here, which is um, kind of unusual. Uh, whatever I've used adapters in the past, there's always been quite a bit of play, but not with this setup. So that's pretty good. Uh, but the Z cam, you know, having that interchangeable mount uh, gives you options. Uh, but I also love that it has the built-in electronic ND that gives me fantastic ND without having to fiddle around with filters in the front. Uh, the only downside is it doesn't have uh, easy control for adjusting that. You can put it on some of the custom buttons, but then it chews up your custom buttons. There's only four on the side here. While ProRes RAW is a pretty fantastic codec, I'm a DaVinci Resolve user and they don't support it. I'm not sure if they ever will. I think they kind of consider that codec to be a competitor, I'm not sure, maybe maybe not. Maybe they're just being lazy and they haven't picked it up yet, but that codec's been out for two years and they still haven't adopted it. So um, it's hard for me to use. Um, and also the fact that it doesn't record it in camera uh, also makes it hard to use. I have to use an external monitor like this to record. And I don't always use an external monitor and I don't always use this one. This one has a fan that is too loud for um, having an onboard mic. I usually use the uh, onboard codecs, which should, you know, they're not bad. You can use ProRes, you can shoot an H.265, which is pretty nice also. The Z-Log2 is a good log profile. Uh, I, I, I've used it for, you know, a year now and had really good results. I've been happy with it. But once you go into the world of RAW, you kind of feel like there's no restraints, there's no restrictions, nothing's, you know, affecting the quality of your image. It's just pure raw data and you can just do so much with it. And that's the nice thing about having RAW in the camera. But since RED has that patent on uh, compressed RAW recording, uh, it, you're just really not gonna see that in cameras other than RED, unfortunately. Usually when you do like a, a B-RAW or Z-RAW or even I believe Canon Light, they're somewhat debayered, like partial debayered or, or whatever. And maybe, maybe that's okay, but um, the Z-RAW codec is even harder to use than ProRes RAW, so it's just still not an option for me. And this AK RAW on the Canon, although it's, it's a nice codec that plays back well in my system, it's just too large in file size. It takes up too much space, and I don't get enough recording time on, on uh, media cards. All right, so that's all I got for you on this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. I'll have more camera comparisons coming up with two global shutter cameras. I might as well tell you, it's the E2S6G global shutter camera and the RED Komodo. So look forward to that video.